My wife was unfaithful to me after 14 great years and one bad one I have decided to end it. My wife and I have been together for 15 years and have two awesome kids, ages 10 and 6. In September of 2020 we were patting ourselves on the back for how awesome we were doing after all these years. In October she got a new job. In April, I caught her having a mostly emotional affair with her boss. I say mostly because there were a few kisses, but nothing else. The last year has been the hardest of my year of my life, and probably hers too. We talked and talked about how it went so bad so fast between us, and what can we do to fix it. We both went to therapy. We never got around to marriage counseling. I wanted to, but she went back and forth about it. I tried to find us a counselor anyways, but no one in our area had any availability. Easter weekend she said she's done. She needs to go out on her own. Two weeks later I caught her having another affair with a co-worker this time. Not sure how long it's been going on but at least since the beginning of April, and probably longer based on the I love you, I miss you texts I saw between them. She had deleted the text history so I only saw texts from that day and have no way to find out when it actually started. My first reaction was we can fix this, marriage counseling now. And I really wanted to, especially for the kids. But after a couple weeks of thinking about it I don't think this is fixable. I don't think I could get over it or trust her ever again. We're still under the same roof, but she's moving out as soon as she can find an apartment. I don't know what to do with my life now. It's obviously going to be all about the kids because they're the most important people in the world to both of us but other than that where the hell do I go from here? Edit, she's 37, I'm 40, if that matters. Comments. 1. Something very very similar happened in my marriage, I never thought I'd have trust issues and always bragged how I was so lucky to have a husband that didn't show any inkling of being attracted to anything besides me. Then he had an affair with a mutual friend. Like you, I only found text messages from that day because the rest were deleted, but they were incriminating enough. I love yous and can't wait to be with yous. It was crushing. Like you, my thought was, we can fix this. And I tried so hard. All it did was cause me to have depression and anxiety. The trust issues were so deep. After a year I looked at myself and my unhappiness, no way did I want to live like this. Now, a year after that, I am about to finalize my divorce. I own my own home and have taken up some fabulous hobbies. I have made some amazing new friends and am truly happier than I've ever imagined being. Not even kidding. I thought I was happy in my marriage. What was happy back then would be mediocre compared to how I feel now. Where do you go? Anywhere you want. Seriously. How do you imagine your life? You'll now have time to yourself without your kids to really care for yourself and nurture your own interests. Start by thinking of all the positives you can do or enjoy. Anything from rock climbing to binge watching the Kardashians in sweatpants all day without judgment. The world is your oyster. Congrats. Op, so many points to agree with here. First off is that we can fix this, depression and anxiety. That's what I've been living through, with a smile on my face, the best I can, for the last year. Now with this latest bombshell. Well at least I don't have to fake it till I make it anymore. And next is the always I thought we were the couple that this wouldn't happen to, man, I feel that. I have a job that used to involve a lot of travel, and I always prided myself on not bothering, pardon the f-bomb, with it when so many other people in my line of work do, and not for lack of opportunity. And I never thought she'd be the one to do it. I had absolute confidence that we were rock solid, and as for where do I go from here, I guess it's all still new so I feel stuck, but it's really good to hear your perspective that I can get out and do what I want. That's going to take some learning, because I already feel like I just need to full-time dad 24-7, which I will do, but your point about working on myself and doing what I want with my time is very good. 2. That we can fix this, phase literally nearly killed me. I just put all my feelings and needs aside to try and please her and make it work. Then after a month of that I caught her sending him nudes. Ugh, typing this out helps me keep the resolve to continue with the divorce. My heart still loves her, but my brain knows that she is a selfish person that only thinks about herself, and that it has to end. Up, man, that's been my whole year. I don't think I've ever applied and invested my heart and soul into anything more than I did to trying to fix this thing over the last year. And to have it all crumble, man. I feel you. 3. Hey dude, I'll do a long reply because like. Your situation just mirrors mine. First of all, read chumplady.com this thing literally saved my life. And second of all, I have been where you and I are now once before 6 years ago. And I did the exact same thing then, guess what? She just cheated on me again 2 months ago. I thought we fixed it 6 years ago by going to therapy and working hard for a grueling 6 months. I was wrong. 
The expression once a cheater, rings very true. Now I don't know your wife, but my wife is a constant attention seeker, and when I look back at our marriage, somewhat narcissistic and very selfish. Things like I give her a back rub, she won't give me one when I need one. I think, I'll vacuum the living room while she is away, she ll like that when she gets back, she never does anything similar for me. It s her, and all her in this relationship. If you look back at your years together, is she selfless? Does she do things for you? Does she support you? Does she ever put your needs above hers? I ask this because, cheating is a wholly selfish act. Instead of cheating, she could have communicated her unhappiness and worked on the marriage or just asked to divorce because she wasn't he happy. No, she chose to cheat instead. Every cheater knows cheating is wrong, they know it will hurt their partner, but they care more about their own needs than their partner's feelings. They tell themselves they deserve it, the relationship is so bad, he doesn't he treat me well etc etc, but cheating is never the fault of the one who gets cheated upon. Never. There are options to solve relationship issues that does not involve cheating. Your wife will paint the marriage as bad in order to feel better and justified, she will say you are a bad husband, she will say things like she loves you but she is not in love with you. It is not your fault. It is not your fault that she is unhappy, you are not responsible for another person's happiness. She could have solved this in many other ways that didn't t involve crushing you and your feelings, but she did. She made that choice. She chose to cheat. If you want answers about her behavior, read up on the affair fog. It is very real, I've seen my wife do it twice now. It's a web page directed at people who get cheated upon, and read about what cheating and cheaters are. When I read that it was like reading a description of my wife ever since our children were born. Selfish, narcissistic, hang in there. I know what you are going through, I feel it too. My heart wants to fix it, but my brain knows there is no fixing it. She will just cheat on me again. I want nothing more than her to change her ways, come home and lovingly embrace me. But I know she won T. And whenever I go for a time without giving her enough attention, she will find it elsewhere. 4. Ugh, it's a phase. I'm deep in it. I have such hope but a small flame inside of me is burning it all down. I know we can't fix it. I'm afraid to be alone, I'm afraid it was all my fault, I'm sorry I didn't learn it sooner. I am sorry, mostly for myself. I know I'm being selfish and not considering her feelings. I know this is tough for her too. We just screwed it up and there's no saving it. Onward. Or should I say, upward. 5. It does take some time to adjust. At first I absolutely hated my days without my kids. I did the time of meditating, journaling, and getting into my thoughts about why I was so hard on myself. I listened to some great books, eventually I tried making plans on my own, by myself. I of course had friends I did things with occasionally but I had to learn to do things for me, and love being with just me. I couldn't rely on my friends every day I didn't have my kids. It started with runs or a hike. Anything to get outside and occupy my mind. Then it blossomed into joining a sports league in the community and now I've taken up a whole new hobby that I do multiple times a week, and my kids even do it with me. I also really got into planning meals, it started with getting takeout for myself once a week and now I feel comfortable going to a restaurant on my own. It's actual an awesome experience, don't try and eat the elephant in one bite my friend, you'll get there. You can always DM if you want to talk. 6. I hate that people just ruin marriages over boredom or things not being perfect for a period of time. Whatever happened to sticking it out through the bad times? These days everyone runs to divorce first even with kids when the divorce will hurt them too. It's a big reason why I could never trust anyone enough to marry again. Op, same here. I went into this wholeheartedly ready for good times and bad, for better or for worse. All of it. And I honestly believe she did too. Her parents are still together after 40 years and are the first to admit they've had their hard times, but they stuck it out. I always thought that's what we would do too and the kids. I just took them to the beach for the week. We had an amazing week. At one point I asked them if they had any questions about what's going on between mom and dad they clammed right up and said no. I didn't press the issue but made sure they know it's okay to ask anything they want when they're ready and we will give them the best answer we can. All that to say, they don't even want to talk about it at this point, which is rare for them. I'm heartbroken for them having to go through this. 7. I've tried to explain it to my son but he's 5. He tells me he's sad I don't live at home with him, and that he hates his mom for making me leave. I do my best to explain that he shouldn't hate her she's a good mother who does everything for him, he just is smart enough to know it's not right. 
He even asks my ex if I can move home right in front of me because he's sad, I lost my home. He even has hypothetical scenarios if a tree or storm broke my apartment could I move back home. I have to explain no, I won't be able to, it kills me. It's all due to her selfishness. I'm an adult and I'll survive but seeing my son be sad and want me home is the hardest part about it all. 8. I think they are just gullible. A younger person gives them attention and tells them they are the coolest thing since the internet. Then comes of sneaking around. It is this time that they tear you apart emotionally to justify their despicable actions. By the time you catch them the true person they have become through the infidelity appears. That is never the person who you married. Most of the time they have done emotional gymnastics with themselves and have gotten right into the deception. I think reconciliation is bad. They only stay for what they stand to lose, never you. They never hold on for love, it is always for lifestyle, 